Hi, my name is Melissa Hatch. I'm a marketing manager here at Brandastic. And today I want to talk about the importance of A-B testing on Facebook and a few steps on how to do it right. A big part of our agency is digital marketing and uh, a lot of the times when we have new clients we come in with a whole entire strategy and a big part of that strategy is A-B testing um, and a lot of our clients don't necessarily know what we're saying and they hear the word test and they're a little uneasy about it. Um, so simply speaking, an A-B test is really what the title of it is. You are testing an A and a B. and uh, that might be simplifying it too far, but it's taking either different creative or different interests or different demographic data and uh, strategically outlining it within Facebook and running your campaign based on uh, that strategy. So whether it's um, testing purely creative options and it's really an opportunity to understand uh, which creative uh, your audience is gravitating toward and then catering it even further as the campaign goes on to uh, make that ad more and more relevant for the user. Step one is to create a campaign within Facebook and it's really simple. You start off with establishing your campaign uh, which is essentially your objective. So it depends on what you're looking to do. If you want to drive more traffic to your landing page you set up uh, a traffic campaign. Um, if you want to focus on lead generation efforts, um, that, that can either go through a Facebook lead gen form or it can go directly to your landing page and they can fill a form out there. Uh, or you may have just the goal for brand awareness and that can be based on uh, your KPI or your goal is to just generate as many impressions as possible. So that's essentially um, as many eyeballs on your ad as possible. Um, so once you've established your campaign, then you go even further and you create different ad sets. And these ad sets um, can have many different ads living within them. So the ad sets are your opportunity to define your target. Uh, if you want to select your gender, um, age, any interests about this audience, and each ad set has um, different criteria. And that's a really big part of this whole A-B test. Within an ad set, you have your ads. Uh, you should have more than one ad within each ad set. You can visualize it almost in this uh, tiered structure. And in the blog, there will be a nice infographic to break that down. So once that's all set up, uh, you really go into step two, which is creating the A and B test. And like I said, it can quickly become an A through Z test if you get really excited and then you don't even know what you're testing at the end of the day. So reel it in and stick with an A and a B. Start with a broad audience. So when you're within your ad set, just make it 18 to 65 plus, which is your entire age range on Facebook, excluding the teenage market, and have it be men and women um, that you're targeting. And I know uh, a lot of clients and agencies can assume like, oh, we know this brand. It's only, you know, middle-aged Caucasian women that engage with this product. That's not necessarily true and you could be uh, excluding a lot of potential interested individuals in your product. So just start wide and then Facebook will tell you once that campaign starts running uh, whether or not you were right. So it will say, you know, that more men versus women are engaging or they're from this region, and then you can optimize further as you, you know, run the campaign longer. In addition to a broad audience, start with limited creative. So you don't need, uh, I know I mentioned hundreds of ads previously, you don't necessarily need that. Pick, you know, three to five images that you feel uh, you wanna promote, or, you know, product images, and start there, and then you can continue to modify as the campaign progresses. Uh, number three is selecting your interests in your ad set. To keep this simple, stick with just selecting one interest. And again, this could be something where you feel compelled to um, create the most interesting audience in the world and select a million different um, aspects of this audience that they love yoga and herbal tea and HGTV and anything else under the sun and you may feel like, well, I'm really making this a defined audience, but uh, it's not necessary. And if you do that and then you run the campaign, 
um, across multiple ad sets and they all have a bunch of different confused targeting, you're not gonna know, was it the HGTV audience that performed or was it um, you know, the Pilates lovers? Like, There's no way of putting that together and I say that because Facebook can't break down your interests um, in your reporting. So you're not gonna be able to know which interest outperform the other. So just stick with one across ad sets, makes that data that much easier to process and narrow down from there. Number four is creative selection. And I will take this in two different directions, but I wanna to touch on this first. Um, it's really important when you're creating your ad sets and the ads that live within each ad set uh, to keep this in mind, so in this scenario, let's say you have one ad set and you have two ads living within that. You decide to turn them both on and let Facebook call the shots and see how they do. Many times, uh, Facebook will make the determination up front after the campaign's only been running for a very short amount of time and it's only been exposed to a very small sample size that ad A outperformed ad B and it'll automatically start serving ad A significantly more. Um, more and more people are gonna continue to see it. Um, so you'll look at the campaign and be like, oh wow, like A was the best, like that was easy, but you really have to pay attention to the data and a lot of the times uh, it makes this rash decision that A is better than B and B is just gonna be the loser and nobody ends up seeing it anymore. Um, but I've come to find and many others have come to find that there could be very um, good parts or good aspects of that B ad that you shouldn't ignore. For example, ad B could have a much cheaper cost per click than ad A. Um, so while ad A is being seen more, it's a lot more expensive when someone clicks on that ad versus ad B didn't really have a fair shot and their cost per click was, you know, $2. Not allowing a large enough sample to see both ads, it's not necessarily a fair assessment of the creative. So to resolve that issue, create um, two different ad sets with targeting the exact same audience and have them both run. And you may feel like, oh, well, they're competing against each other, that's gonna be a waste of money. There's some truth behind that, but if you let them run for 24 to 48 hours, then you can call the shots and see which ad set is performing the best and turn one off that you're not in love with or you're not liking the numbers that you're seeing. So puts it a little bit more in your court versus letting Facebook purely make the decision off a very small sample. Okay, number five is selecting your winner and as a digital marketer um, or even if you're managing your own campaign, you can feel tempted, uh, especially when you're putting money behind something to make the decision right away. Like, ah, that's, that's the one, we got it, we figured it out. Facebook needs at least 24 hours at a minimum to optimize your campaign or really to gain any kind of insights from it. Don't make any changes to your your campaign at least until after 24 hours. Um, it's even better just to wait 48. So I like to explain to my clients that once we've launched a campaign, they can be uh, very excited and want to know how things are doing right away. And it's not uh, out of laziness that I don't you know, feel like making any changes, but it's just giving these ads a fair chance to run and have Facebook do its thing with its algorithm and uh, you know, nobody understands it just like the cloud and we're just gonna accept it for what it is and um, give it its chance to do its thing. It's very important to uh, take into consideration your budget behind a campaign. Um, a smaller budget, it's gonna take that much more time to get the kind of impressions or reach that you're looking to see within your campaign uh, versus throwing a ton of money into it at the beginning. You're gonna get results and much higher impressions, reach, et cetera, pretty early on. So you'd be able to make judgment calls that much sooner versus a smaller budget. It's like a leaky faucet and it's trickling out. So uh, keeping that in mind, I, hopefully that level sets expectations of you know the course that these ads run in the beginning.